Writer's Guide to Historical Fiction. These are some historical fiction book recommendations for people who don't necessarily like historical fiction. Maybe you're wanting to break into a new genre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some books here that they're kind of breezy, right? I mean, I wouldn't say they don't have hard themes because it's hard to find historical fiction that doesn't have hard themes. But these books are books that I would classify them more as beach reads and that they're easy to read. It's not something where you're going to be, you know, looking up a lot of historical references or maybe there's a lot of difficult vocabulary or maybe, you know, the author assumes that you know a lot. These books are not like that at all. These books are books that you're going to be wanting to finish. You're going to be wanting to turn the page. They're fun. They can be hard. You might cry at the end of a lot of them, but that's historical fiction. The first one is The Secret Book of Flora Lee by Patty Callahan Henry. Now this is a book about two girls, Flora Lee and her sister Hazel, and they were children during World War II in London, and as part of something that was called Operation Pied Piper, they were evacuated without their mother to the countryside, to basically the countryside in Oxford during the Blitz during World War II. Now this is a book, it has dual timelines, but it's not told in a way, sometimes with books that have dual timelines, the timeline, the more recent timeline, it kind of gives away what happens in the later timeline, which to me, I don't like that because then you're kind of asking yourself why you're even reading it. That's not how this book works. Both timelines have you turning the page because you don't know what's happening, but basically what happens in the beginning of this book is Flora, the younger girl, she disappears. Now, now, I don't normally like reading books about missing children or children who've been murdered or you know stuff like that. I just don't personally like that. But with the way this book is written, and this isn't a spoiler, it's obvious that Flora is still alive. So it's more just about finding Flora, but this book, it was just a really fun book. I mean, I, I don't know if I can use the word fun because it is dealing with very serious topics, but it was a book that I, you know, I couldn't put it down. And also there was a love story element to it as well that I thought was very compelling. So anyways, I just, I really liked this book. And if you've never really read historical fiction, you might want to start with this one. Now this one, I've lost the book cover to it because I hate reading hardbacks with book covers. I really just hate it. And I read this one a long time ago before I had booktube, so I didn't really care if I lost it. But this is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Now Kristen Hanna, you know, I, eh, sometimes I don't like her books. Like for example, I know, you know, The Women is the smash hit of the year. That's her Vietnam era book that just was recently published. I personally didn't like that book. I know I'm probably the only person on the planet who didn't. But this is a World War II book by Kristen Hanna, and it's about two French sisters who basically both join the French resistance. And it's just a beautiful book. And it's different than Kristen Hanna's other books because the way that she typically writes books, and I've read quite a few of her books, is they're more like soap operas and, you know, every possible bad thing that could happen to a character that happens to the character. And then once you've read all her books, they sort of just, you see the pattern in all of them, the same one, you know. They get trashed by some man, and then their mom dies of cancer, and then they lose everything. It's all the same in all her books. But this one is different. It's definitely not like any of her other books. And if you've never tried historical fiction, it's just one of those books that you just, you keep one reading. And I will say, you are gonna cry at the end. It has a very touching, very sad ending, but bittersweet at the same time. Another historical fiction writer who I really like who writes kind of breezy historical fiction I would say so not super serious historical fiction but I mean it's about serious topics but I guess it's more of a beach read almost and that's Jojo Moya so this one right here the girl you left behind this is a World War One story it's a story about a woman she is a French woman in occupied France so the Germans have you know taken over her husband is she doesn't know where she doesn't know if he's alive or not and and her husband is an artist, and there is a painting of the main character, the woman, I can't remember her name right now, but there's a painting of her, there's a story that kind of revolves around this painting and a German commandant, and then there's also dual timelines to this, so you also go to modern London with a woman who has recently lost her husband, who happens to be in possession of this painting that's actually worth a lot of money. But this is definitely a compelling book. I, you know, found myself staying up late reading this book. It's one of those books that you're gonna wanna finish. So if you are looking to get into historical fiction, this is a good option. And another good option from Jojo Moyes, if you're looking to read more of that author, I really enjoyed The Giver of Stars. Now this is about four women who are living in Kentucky in the Depression era, and they have created, or they are part of, 
the Pack Horse Library. So this is a real thing that went on for a while until World War II. But basically they would get books and magazines and other items from the library to rural Kentucky, to Appalachian Kentucky, to some of the poorest people. But the main story revolves around an English woman who marries an American man and then she kind of figures out pretty quickly in her marriage that the marriage isn't what she thought it was. So she kind of joins the Pack Horse Library to in a way escape her marriage. So, and then there is a murder mystery and a trial and it's just filled with a lot of very propulsive things in the plot of the book and you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna finish the book and you're gonna want to read it. So if you've never tried historical fiction, it's a good option. And then another great option for historical fiction if you've never read it before is the first two books in what is called the Century Trilogy by Ken Follett. So that's Fall of Giant and Winter of the World. Fall of Giant is about World War One, and Winter of the World is about World War II. Now, I can't personally recommend Edge of Eternity, which is the third in this trilogy. This one is about, you know, kind of like the Vietnam era. What was weird about that book, I honestly couldn't finish it. And I'm a big Ken Follett fan. I just find that he writes in a way that makes you want to turn the page. I mean, sure, he's not, you know, he's not writing literature here, right? But if you're looking for a book that you're not going to want to put down, he's a great author to turn to. But it was weird. Edge of Eternity, it almost felt like he didn't write it. It almost felt like a Ken Follett apprentice wrote it and then they published it under his name. I don't know. I mean, if you guys have read it and you didn't think that, let me know in the comments below, but I honestly couldn't even finish that book. And I loved the first two. These books, what I really enjoyed about them is they present a whole different cast of characters. And so you really see all sides of each of the wars. You know, you've got a British character or, you know, several British characters. You've got the German point of view. You've got the Russians. You've got the Americans. You've always got, you've always got the Americans, right? And, but people think about Americans, right? So I just enjoyed it from that perspective. I felt like I learned a lot about World War I and World War II through these books, through these characters. These are very large books, but you know, you get you get through them quickly because they're kind of like male soap operas, right? You just, you just want to find out what happens. So they're a good option if you've never tried historical fiction before and you're looking for a good book. Another really fun historical fiction novel is The Revenant by Michael Punke. And this is happening in the 1830s and kind of like the Rocky Mountain region. It's actually based on a real story about a real story about a guy. He was a fur trader. His name was Hugh Glass and he was attacked by a grizzly bear and left for dead. Now the part about being left for dead, it's not like Hugh Glass blamed the people he was with, you know, the fur trading company that he was with for leaving him for dead because they were in a very dangerous territory and, you know, they couldn't risk the lives of all those men for one man. But the part that he really got angry about, because as you can imagine, he did survive this grizzly attack against all odds, is that the men who left him, they also robbed him blind. So they took his gun, they took his knife, they took his food. So he had no way of surviving if he did happen to live, which he did. So it becomes a story of revenge as well as a survival story. I just couldn't really put this book down. I lo particularly love survival stories because, you know, they teach you about how to survive in the wild. And you know, this is something that I have no understanding of, right? I mean, I'm sure if I was out in the wild for one day, I would die of exposure. So how are people surviving over those long periods of time in the freezing cold? How are they getting food? How are they getting water? You know, all of this stuff that goes into surviving like that. I actually love stories like this, and if you do too, that is a great option. Another good one for beginners is Beneath a Scarlet Sky by Mark T. Sullivan. Now, the reason I liked this one, this one, again, was based off of a true story. It was based off of a man who was living in Italy during the time of World War II, and the reason why I liked this one is because there actually really isn't that many stories that at least I've read about Italy during World War II. Obviously, Italy was under the Axis powers uh, under Mussolini during World War II, but apparently what happened and what the author Mark Sullivan said in his afterword is that he had initially wanted to write this story as a story of actual, you know, a true story, but because the Italians were just so ashamed of what they had done during World War II that they basically burned all the records. So there was just so little records that he kind of had to turn the story into historical fiction. It's a story of a young man with the help of 
some Catholic priests. He helps to smuggle some Jewish people over the Alps because he's in the Italian Alps into Switzerland. It's also a love story. It's also a story of him being a spy. So he's an Italian spy. He's, you know, on the face of it working with the Nazis, but he's really not, right? He's a spy. So it's the story of that, sort of how he has to deal with that because people obviously hate him, right? For because he's ostensibly working with the Nazis. But it was a really good book, and if you are looking to start with something in historical fiction, that's a good option. And then another great one that's a really compelling book, it's a book that's gonna make you cry, it's beautifully written, great historical fiction, and that's The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Now this one, you know, obviously it's a retelling of the myth of Achilles, but the reason why I'm putting it in historical fiction is because it's very historically accurate. You know, Madeline Miller, she really tried to write this book talking about the way that people lived in Greek society at this time, how they fought wars in this time. She tried to be really historically accurate. And what I found particularly compelling about the book is that I tend to not like to read retellings of myths because I know what happens, right? I like to read stories where I don't know what happens. But even though I knew what happened in this book, in the Song of Achilles, I still loved it. I still thought it was so beautifully written that it was worth the read. So if you're looking for a very beautiful book to dive into that's historical fiction, that is a great option for you. And as always, happy reading.